they're really high, return on equity being at 200%. That's fantastic for any investment, regardless of its business model. Hi everyone, so I love the real estate marketplace business model. So I thought I would check out Zillow versus Rightmove versus realestate.com.au, which is in Australia. Rightmove is in England, Zillow is obviously in America. So to do this, I'm gonna do my quick valuation, like a high level valuation of each of these companies. I'll go through my nine point checklist, and then I'll give you my opinion at the end, which one I think is the best. So let's jump in. Now, before I begin today, for me, when I'm recording this video, it's early November. So I have, as you can see, I actually did a clean shave yesterday. And the reason I'm doing that is because I'm doing something called Movember. And that's supporting men's health. It's a charity organization based out of, I think it's Australia and New Zealand. Uh, Investing with Tom has organized a group of us YouTubers. I've got them here on the screen next to me. And all of us together, uh, silly enough that we're all gonna attempt to grow mustaches. Uh, in the month of November. And the reason we're doing this is we're going to try to raise as much money as possible to help with uh, men's mental health issues. And look, I think it's a poorly understood uh, area and it needs a lot more help to reduce suicide rates, especially amongst men. So look, I'm gonna be donating and I'm gonna be attempting to grow a mustache with these fools next to me. Now, if you do feel like supporting our mustache growth and men's mental health, it would be very nice of you if you wanted to contribute and the link's in the description below. Each one of us are going to be asking our, asking our audience to help us in, in any way they can and we're gonna to try to raise as much money as we can for this and it looks all for a good cause and all for a bit of fun. So no matter how much you can contribute, it all is awesome. Okay, now back to today's content. Now we're talking about real estate marketplaces. Like I said, I love these business models. They're amazing because they're free for the consumer and but they give they charge high fees to the agents and I think the consumer is the most important person here so I think that's a great business model and they get lots of great data that the it's fantastic for the agents to use themselves. Zillow is about a 21 billion dollar market cap company. Rightmove in UK, the UK is only about 6 billion. The REA group realestate.com.au essentially in Australia it's about 20 billion dollars. It's pretty big. And look Competition is moving in all of these places, and I think this is the main concern. At the moment, these are the biggest in each of these countries, but like I just said, competition is coming. So let's jump into the nine point checklist. So first we're gonna look at revenue growth. So Zillow's revenue growth over the past sort of five or six years, it's grown fantastically from around about 300 million to nearly 4 billion. But in about 2018, maybe it was 2017, somewhere around there, I know Zillow started buying houses and then like buying houses directly from uh, the customers, like from the consumer and trying to sell them themselves, which would significantly increase the revenue. So as we can see in the gross margins, the gross margins here, we can see that it was around the 90% range, but then in 2019, it dropped in half essentially down to about 47 or so percent. So we'd give that a cross in the gross margins when we get to that a little later, but just remember that's the time that the business had changed to buying houses and maybe the margins in buying and selling the houses and they're trying to do it really fast. Maybe they're only making a couple of percent on this. So um, just in those big numbers, they were maybe selling, buying a $500,000 house, trying to flip it for 530 or 540,000. So there's only probably five, 10% margin in that. And that's the reason why we see the big decline in gross margins. And I also think that's why we see quite a big uptick in the revenue as well. So now moving over to Rightmove in the UK. So back in 2012, there are about 120 million. Now there are about 260 million. So that has been growing. But if we look over the last since, I don't know, 2017, it was steadily going up. But then 2020, it went from 290 million down to 200 million. And now it's come back up to 260. So obviously the pandemic played a big, big factor there. Uh, must have been something, I thought housing sales went crazy, but there must've been a period there where you couldn't do showings and uh, they must've really struggled to get listings on their platform there for, for some period of time there. And it looks like it's rebounded since then. So revenue, we can probably give that a tick uh, since it has been growing over the past sort of 10 years. Uh, even though it's a little lumpy. Now it's a realestate.com.au in Australia, and it's gone from 2014 to 400 million to about a billion. So that didn't, they didn't even have much of a decline. It's gone from 940 down to 880, 
in from 2019 to 2020. So it's similar to what happened with Rightmove, but not as dramatic. And it's already bounced back higher than it was even in 2019. So yep, definitely a tick here. Now turning to gross margins, and I've already looked at Zillow's gross margin. We saw that was cut in half, and that's because of the new strategy that Zillow were doing. By the way, that strategy that Zillow were doing with buying houses and then selling them again, they've actually decided to stop doing that now, which I think was a good move because it was killing their gross margins. And I think that it's probably a cleaner, leaner business if they don't worry about holding those big assets, even for just the weeks that they were holding them for, it, can't, it could get them into some sort of trouble. I don't know. Uh, it looks like they've gone back to the same as uh, rightmove and realestate.com.au now. But for rightmove, their gross margins, well, I can't get a feel here. The, the, the numbers are playing tricks on me here. It says 100%, but that's not right. Uh, look, I've gone and had a look at another place and it looks like it's about 70, 80%. So that's really strong. And realestate.com.au, they're about, well, they've actually been in the 70% range and now just the last year and a bit, they've gone from mid 70s down to, well, now down to 69%. So it has actually been declining and I think that might be because of a website called Domain, no, domain.com.au in Australia. They are a very strong competitor and they are growing quite quickly in the same space. So realestate.com.au had the biggest, the biggest part of the market share, but now it's getting eaten away by Domain. So that is probably why those margins are declining and I would see that as a small problem. Now let's turn to return on invested capital. This is really important. So this, the return on invested capital for Zillow, well, it's actually been negative for the last seven or eight years. It's just turned positive, but it's only 4%. So the return on equity, return on invested capital, these numbers are pretty poor. I don't like that. Um, I wanna see stronger than that. So if I look at right move, um, this is where things get very interesting. So return on equity, return on capital metrics here. We're talking 200, from 100 to 1000% in terms of these numbers. It's because it's just it's such a lean business. They don't hold any, they don't really hold any assets. They don't really need to. It's just, um, it's a service they're providing essentially. So these numbers are gonna be a little bit skewed, but they're really high. Return on equity being at 200%. That's fantastic for any investment, regardless of its business model. Then we look at realestate.com.au in Australia and their numbers are really solid as well. We're looking in the 30, sort of 10 to 30% range. Uh, five, six years ago, it was in the 40% range. Fantastic numbers here as well. This is a fantastic business and they're proving it in these return on equity and return on capital numbers. So yeah, that's fantastic too. We'll give that a tick. Not as good as right move, but not as but, but significantly better than Zillow. Now we're up to debt. Now debt is the number one reason why any business gets into trouble. We definitely don't want to invest in something that is super leveraged because it just incorporates so much more risk for us. Now let's look at Zillow. Uh, Zillow's current assets are at over 6 billion. They've only got about 3 billion in total liabilities. So Zillow have a fantastic debt situation and there's no, nothing to worry about here whatsoever. With Rightmove, it's a similar situation. They have $89 million worth of current assets and they only have looks like about 40 or so million dollars worth of liabilities in total. Again, that's fantastic. We have nothing to worry about there. Now, realestate.com.au, they have significantly more current assets than current liabilities uh, and their long-term assets are significantly more than their long-term liabilities. It's not as strong as the previous two, but it's totally fine. This is strong enough, no, no issues here. Okay, next up is free cash flow. So we wanna see this growing. And to do that, I go to the cash flow statement. So I'm doing, I'm doing Zillow first here. And I look at cash from operations, and we minus this capital expenditure line here. So cash from operations, oh, it's been all over the place. It's sort of been single digits here, $250 million the next year, back to single digits, then negative, then 400 million. This is all over the place. I'm gonna to have to give that across because the free cash flow numbers are wild. They've obviously been investing in all sorts of different things, but yeah, we'd have to dig into what they, the capital expenditure numbers are actually pretty low. So something, the, the revenue is not translating into free cash flow. Therefore, I don't know what's going on here, but I, I, don't, I don't really like that. So I'm, I'm gonna to have to give that across for sure. Now we go look at right move and we're looking at cash from operations and that has been growing from 70 million to 150 million. And that looks much more in line with what ha was happening with the revenue. The capital expenditures are really low. So that's great. We can give that a tick. 
Now for realestate.com.au, cash from operations has gone from 180 million to 320. So again, similar to what's going on with the revenue, it's been growing about the same. And that's, that's good to see. The capital expenditure numbers have been pretty consistently low or under $10 million every year. That's great. So yeah, that's fine. That number's growing, so we can give that a tick. Now, if you were looking to invest in Rightmove or realestate.com.au, you're gonna need a brokerage account that can give you access to international markets. I recommend Saxo Bank and Interactive Brokers. If you wanna have a look at how Interactive Brokers looks and how it feels, there's a link in my description where you can go and get a demo account and play around and see what you think. That's my preferred broker and look, I think they're the best broker in the world. I'll have a video coming out soon on why I think that is specifically, but Interactive Brokers, they're the best. Okay, next up is Shares Outstanding and we don't wanna be getting diluted, so let's see what's going on there. So we're looking at Zillow first and we're looking at the share count. And as we can see, it's gone from 67 million, 98 million, 100 million, and now it's at 247 million. So for the last decade, we have been significantly diluted if you're invested in this company. Yeah, the company has been growing significantly as well, but you're still getting diluted. So that growth rate, even though it's been exceptional, well, it's getting, we're getting hurt by the shares getting diluted as well. So it's definitely not as good. Now comparing that to Rightmove where in 2016, the share count was about 950 million and now it's down to 870 million. So it's actually been getting smaller this number, which is good because it means if we were an owner in this company, the our share of the ownership of this business is actually getting bigger. So there's the less shares there are outstanding, the better it is for us, the more ownership we have. That's fantastic, we have to give that a big tick. Now let's look at realestate.com.au and we see that it was 131 million back in 2017 and it's still 131 million in 2021. So that's flat, that's fine, we're not getting diluted, but we're not um, increasing our share ownership as well. So that's fine, but as long as it's flat, I'm happy with that. Okay, now we look at insider ownership because we want the incentives of the management team aligned with us as shareholders. So we want them to have a big stake in the company as well. So to find this information out, I go to Simply Wall Street and I look at the leadership team section here. So we've got Lloyd Frank, Richard Barton as the co-founders and their compensation is, looks like about six to eight million a year, but their ownership in the company is substantial. So we've got Lloyd at five, like half a billion dollars. We've got Richard at about a billion dollars worth of ownership in the company. Comparing that to their compensation package it is much more important of the shares of the company to do well than their compensation. And that means it's a, that's the same alignment as us as shareholders, so that's a tick. Then I go have a look at Rightmove and we have Peter Brooks Johnson, who's the CEO. He gets paid about a million a year, but his ownership in the company is about 14 million. So again, it's far more important that the share price goes up for him because he has significantly more ownership in the company than his compensation package, so that's great. Then we look at realestate.com.au in Australia and we look at Owen Wilson, who's the CEO, and Janelle Hopkins, who's the CFO, and their compensation is about four million and two million, but the ownership percentage they have is, well, it's very low. So Owen Wilson, who's the CEO, his compensation is twice as strong as how much shares, how many shares he has outstanding. So he only has about $3 million in shares and his compensation is more than that. Therefore, each year, the share price goes up or down. It doesn't really matter for him. His compensation is pretty good. Janelle Hopkins, the same. Her $2 million in compensation each year is significantly more than her $140,000 worth of shares. So this management team is not aligned with shareholders like the previous two. Next up, I'd like to check whether there's any super investors invested in either of these companies. Now, for Zillow, I couldn't find anyone that I think is worth copying or that I think is a fantastic investor who's invested in Zillow. Realestate.com.au, I couldn't find either. But for Rightmove, what I did was in Simply Wall Street, I can have a look down in the top shareholders list here. I did this for all the companies. I'm just trying to look through this list to see if I'm familiar with anybody. And we've got Fundsmith here, which is Terry Smith in the UK. He runs Fundsmith, fantastic investor, and somebody that I think is definitely got a process in how they invest and has done exceptionally well over the past for, for many decades now. And that's a big tick of approval. We've also got Cotillion Capital Management here as well, which is another fantastic UK um, hedge fund, I think. And yeah, they're an investment management company anyway. So there's two names there that I'm familiar with. Terry Smith, I'm far more familiar with. So that's a tick. Now, last but not least is price. Price is the most important thing. So regardless of how good these companies are so far, 
price is what's most important. This is gonna make or break our investment. So we wanna pay significantly below what we think the fair value of the company is. So to find fair value, I'm gonna use my intrinsic value calculator, which is free, it's in the description if you wanna copy. Now, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go ahead and put in all the information for each one of these companies and I'll show you what the results are. So I was putting in the numbers for Zillow and the problem we're having with Zillow is that the free cash flow that they're generating is super inconsistent. So look, even if I average out the past five years, I'm gonna get probably a negative number and negative numbers don't work in my calculator. I don't really know how to value a company that has negative free cash flow. I don't know when it's gonna turn free cash flow positive. So I'm speculating and that's something that I don't wanna do in any of my investments. So unfortunately for Zillow, I'm gonna to have to give them a question mark. I don't really know how to do this accurately and I, I don't wanna take the risk in trying to use another method that I'm not very familiar with. So I'm gonna leave Zillow for now. If you have any ideas, you can leave a comment below, but this one's not for me. Okay, so I've just gone and put all the numbers in for Rightmove. Now, the, the thing with Rightmove is their growth rate. Look, I went and saw what the analysts were thinking. I had a look at their past growth rates and it's only about 8%. So we have to kind of go with that. We don't. I don't think they're gonna grow at 20% moving forward. So we have to assume they're gonna continue growing at around this rate and I want my massive discount rate like I always do. And I've put in the extra numbers here and it tells me I wanna buy this at $1.20, which is 120 pence. So remember in the UK, they talk in pence, not pounds. So, so I just go over to Yahoo Finance and it quotes in pence, so 690 pence. So now my, my calculator tells me 120 pence. Now that seems ridiculous. Now it's the reason is because of my discount rate being so high. Now. This company has had fantastic return on invested capital metrics, return on equity numbers, things like that. So even though the growth rate's about 8%, okay, this is a fantastic company, so we probably don't need much margin of safety here. Maybe we do only wanna get about 20% return from our money. Uh, and we would feel pretty confident that we would pull this off with, that, with the business being so good. I still only wanna buy this at about 200 pence, $2. So, for me, this is this is too overpriced at the moment. Okay, I now got the numbers ready for realestate.com.au. You're gonna laugh at me here because I wanna buy this at around about $17. And if I go look at the share price, it's $160. So, yep, I don't think that's gonna be happening anytime soon. Now, what's the reason for that? And why is the share price so far away from anywhere near what I'd wanna buy it for? So, if I wanted to find its fair value, what I do is I change this to 10%. And it tells me its fair value is about $70. But I like a really big margin of safety. I like things to get silly and then I want to invest in it. So what I do is I change that to 30%, but okay, now we let's compare it to right move and put it in 20%. Okay, I'd want to buy this at around $30. Maybe, maybe that's pretty reasonable for, for quite a good company, but I think right move is a better company. And well, the price is still significantly too far away. So I don't think we have to worry too much here either. So let me put all this together and give you my opinion. Now, I think Zillow is trying to take market share and it's not ready to be an investment yet. That free cash flow is all over the place. I really want them to be free cash flow positive. Rightmove is a fantastic business. It's, it's actually nearly a perfect company from a financials point of view. It is just overpriced. So I might put this on my watch list and look, maybe something dramatic happens in the world and I know things do happen. Things weird things happen. I know back in 2000, Amazon went, it fell 90% in its stock price. So you never know. Something could happen like that to right move and it'll be on my list. And yeah, fantastic company there. Realestate.com.au. I didn't like the uh, insider ownership percentages of the leadership team. I thought the incentives were not aligned and the price is ridiculously too high as well. So I might put right move on my list, not realestate.com.au. The reason for realestate.com.au as well was that there is a little bit of a competition is issue with domain as well. So yeah, right moves the winner and I hope you enjoyed this video. If you got anything out of it, make sure you give a like to it and I will see you next time.